a pleasant evening to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Reverend Father Fidel M. Opulencia, the current parochial vicar of Santa Rosa de Lima Parish here in the city of Santa Rosa, province of Laguna. I am here to give bits of information about our patron saint in relation to her coming feast day on August 23 as an introduction to our healing rosary. St. Rose of Lima was declared patroness of the Latin America and the second patroness of the Philippines. She was born on April 20, 1586 and died on August 24, 1617. She was a native of South America and her real name was Isabel. But she was a beautiful baby that she was called Rose and that name remained. As she grew older, she became more and more beautiful. One day, her mother put a wreath of flowers in her head to show off her loveliness to friends. But Rose had no desire to be admired, for her heart had been given to Jesus. One time, she became afraid that her beauty might be a temptation to someone since people could not take their eyes off her. Therefore, she rubbed her face with pepper until it was all red and blistered. She worked hard to support her poor parents and humbly obey them, except when they tried to get her to marry. Her love of Jesus was so great that when she talked about Him, her face glowed and her eyes sparkled. So she also had many temptations from the devil, and many times she had to suffer a feeling of terrible loneliness and sadness, for God seemed so far away. Yet she offered cheerfully all these troubles to him. In her long, painful sickness, she used to pray, Lord, increase my sufferings, and with them increase your love in my heart. Many miracles followed her death, and she was beatified by Clement IX in 1667 and canonized in 1671 by Pope Clement X. She was represented wearing a crown of roses on her head. My dear brothers and sisters, may the intercession of St. Rose of Lima, our patroness, be our guide and our foundation of living a life dedicated to our Lord Jesus Christ. Saint Rose of Lima, pray for us. Amen. Welcome to Santa Rosa de Lima Parish in the city of Santa Rosa. We have been granted the grace to lead the 75th Healing Rosary for the World under the auspices of the Manila Cathedral. We are now on the fifth day of the Novenario for Santa Rosa de Lima, the first patroness of the colonies. When the area from Los Baños to San Pedro was known as Tabuco, edge of the river, Santa Rosa was but a sitio in what was then Barrio Binyan of Tabuco, which was Cabuyao. One town after another became pueblos leaving Cabuyao to be called Tabuco. Binyan was then a barrio, Santa Rosa but a sitio. But when Binyan became a pueblo, ocho barrios se compone el pueblo de Binyan, half of the barrios were from Santa Rosa. Tagapo Viejo, Bocol, Balibago, Dila de Angostura, Bocol, 
we had difficulty accepting. Eventually, we found out this map that showed Rio de Bucal. Springs are endemic in the area. Most old compounds have natural springs. In fact, Coca-Cola Far East, in a choice between Thailand and the Philippines, chose Santa Rosa because of its manamis namis na tubig. While you can see on top of the retablo, the Dominican seal, the sitio, the barrio of Santa Rosa, was not under the Dominicans from the very beginning. Just like in Binyan, the early priests were Augustinians, and even seculars were assigned to the place. The first ecclesiastical structure of Santa Rosa, which of now only the facade remains, was the Visita. In the Superior Decreto of January 18, 1792, it stated that, that a separate visita or chapel was to be constructed. And in that same Superior Providencia, the Palai, for the Palai contributions, De Este Pueblo was to be constructed a storeroom with three locks in it. Of the eight Dominican haciendas, the crown jewels were Binyan and Santa Rosa. They produced rich harvests in contrast to the other haciendas, which either had problems with the haciendas that were divided, Calamba that was malaria infested, in Binyan and Santa Rosa, probably because of the volcanic eruptions, had fertile soil, and the Dominicans built an intricate irrigation system. Spanish colonial times, we enjoyed twice a year harvests. This was not on Sahod Ulan, but on the irrigation system that watered the fertile soil of Binyan and Santa Rosa. So geographically, Santa Rosa has the advantage and socially, we have also the advantage of a creative minority that made a difference in the different periods of our history. Because of the bountiful harvests, the parishioners were also very generous donors and daughters of the church compared for the time that it was constructed, look at our church. The majestic retablo, the width, the length. The width remains the same as it was when it was constructed after 12 years, around 1812. According to vignettes, some of the artisans were Chinese families who joined the Dominicans, the Liangkos, Lihaukos, Tionkos. And as you can see in the old picture, the pair of chandelier that came all the way from Europe, donated by our great grandmother, Francisca Almeida, Mestiza Portuguesa, from Binyan. The icon of Santa Rosa de Lima on the side retablo was a gift from the government of Peru. While the retablo was, donate, was donated by Congresswoman Uliran Joaquin, PPC President Conchita Delfino and Mr. Celso Dioco. The icon of Santa Rosa de Lima was donated by the government of Peru and welcomed to the parish on August 23, 2000, 
the feast day of our patroness. The seventh priest from Santa Rosa, Reverend Father Gabriel Maria Anonas Delfino, did archival research for his masteral thesis. We owe to him the wealth of data we would have no means of uncovering. Like, he accessed this document written in Latin, talking of two bells of the Santa Rosa de Lima Parish Church. Since none of us heard of this other than the vignette I heard from my uh, aunt, uh, Auntie Adelaida Tionco that ang matandang kampanaryo mas mataas. Hindi naman sinabing dalawa at mataas kasi nasa tuktok ng bubong. Later, about 10 years ago, a picture was shared by John Tuwell of a 1920-12 picture of a church among his collections, but the church was unidentified. To our great surprise, it was the facade of the Santa Rosa de Lima Parish Church. And indeed, there were two bells on top similar to the facade and the bells of Santo Domingo in Intramuros. In the first decade of American rule in the Philippines, we see the facade of Santa Rosa de Lima with American soldiers and the two bells intact. We can only presume that the bells were taken down, not destroyed by the Taal uh, uh, volcanic eruption, which according to vignettes, reached the patio of our church. From the 1912 picture, you can see what was then and until 1960s, the baptismal font, where we now have the current belfry. So the, the bell tower was not destroyed, but for safety, the bells were taken down and reinstalled in what is now our present Campanario, which also shares a big Sunico bell out, out of the bells donated by the foundry of Don Hilarion Sunico, Santa Rosa was gifted with a big sonorous bell. The bells, the campanario, on top of the roof of the facade of the Church of Santa Rosa de Lima Parish, according to st stories for generations, were heard far and wide up to the lakeside barrios. And this could be very possible because there was nothing to trap the sound. We grew up to the ringing of the bells to announce that it was one hour before Mass, 30 minutes before Mass, and then pagsunod-sunod na, ayan na, iiskila na, malapit na magsimula ang Misa. We also grew up to the ringing of bells in the evening if someone had died. And from the sound of the bells, the old folks could distinguish it was if it was male, female, adult, or a youngster. We also used to have a town crier who would announce who recently died. We also grew up to prayer for the souls in purgatory at 8 p.m. We would also like to share with you the eight streets named after priests of Santa Rosa but not listed as parish priests. 
and along the what we we used to call kinagis ng daang procession on the parallel streets of what is now called Governor F. Gomez Street and Gobernador Silio Bernardo Savalle Street are the ancestral houses and mostly also the owners of the icons that would participate in the Lenten possession of the town. Being a young town, we started as a sitio, later Barrio of Binyan, for the time it was constructed around 1812, and it took around 16 years to construct. It was a labor of love, a show of fidelity to the faith, and what Pope John Paul said to our ambassador to the Vatican, Henrietta de Villa, take care of God's gifts to the Filipino people, faith and family. Indeed, this church was built on the faith of the people. Please join us in praying the Holy Rosary for the healing of the world.